Welcome JavaScript fans to the first ever Space Dojo Code Kata. I am your host for this session, Josh Owens. Uh, if you're not familiar with me, I run uh, Crater.io. I do the uh, Crater podcast. I do Space Dojo show and uh, run SpaceDojo.com, which is a, uh, a site that's all about building JavaScript applications. So. Uh, this April Fools, I, I saw, or yesterday actually, the day before April Fools, I saw a tweet that I, I really, really liked from uh, someone that suggested instead of uh, playing pranks on someone, use your time for good. And so that's what I wanted to do today. I wanted to try this out. Uh, if you enjoy this, this video on uh, debugging techniques with JavaScript, then Please, uh, please do give me a like. If we hit 50 likes, I'll probably make another one of these. Uh, and then, it, of course, you can go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Meteor Club. And uh, if you donate there, uh, I'm going to put up a new um, prize level, uh, whatever, a goal. And when we hit 1,500, uh, I'll start making these every week. So, uh, again, it's uh, Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Meteor Club or... Uh, hit the like button. If we have 50 likes, I'll, I'll make it at least one more. Um, yeah, so today I, I really wanted to dive into uh, showing you guys how to debug JavaScript applications. Uh, it's a question I get quite a bit and uh, people seem confused about all the different ways it'll work because there's a, a number of different techniques. And so uh, we're going to cover how to use the Chrome console to set some breakpoints um, and we'll talk about using console log, which is pretty basic. Um, and I'll show you a little bit. Um, I'm going to use Meteor for this uh, because that's what Telescope's built on. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll look a little bit at some React stuff as well. Uh, and then we'll we'll look at uh, the debugger keyword as well. So uh, I think it it covers quite a few techniques that can be handy. And so let me get uh, BIM set up here. Okay, I think we're good. And uh, yeah, so you can see I've downloaded the, the Nova branch of Telescope because I wanted to use React and I thought it would be a good uh, showcase. And you can see here, if we just go to inspect, if you have your developer tools turned on, uh, it'll pull up this console window here. And we can go to sources and the way a Meteor app works is, uh, you know, everything's under this app here. Uh, we can scroll down. You can see all the packages that are being loaded. Uh, Telescope generally loads everything via packages. So we can go into the Nova base components here. And like we can see uh, routes.jsx. This is a flow router uh, routes file. Uh, so if you're familiar with something like React, this is similar to React router. And we can see here on line 11, we're, we're just catching the base route. And then we're, this action on line 13 is what's actually going to be performed code-wise. And so we can set the breakpoint here on line 16 and reload the page. It takes a second, uh, but you can see we get this nice little pause and debugger here paused right here and we can we can start inspecting things so we can do query dot params uh, that actually hasn't been set oh yeah yeah actually it has it's being passed in and then we're running uh, we're checking to see if it's empty if it is we're appending new to it there on line 16 uh, and then we would we can we can actually step over right we can go past that and it would run this selector line next step over there it is and you can see we pause there. So it's just gonna it's gonna move one point at a time whenever we say step over. So you can see here we get to line 19 where it's actually trying to mount the uh, component into the app container. So it's trying to create this list container and then mount it into the application, which is basically how Flow Router works with React Mounter, I believe is what it's called. Uh, and so if we hit continue, one thing that may be a little confusing though is we are compiling this JSX down to JavaScript so that the browser can do something with it. And sometimes 
the you may try to set a breakpoint somewhere and you can see it like flashes and then moves the breakpoint up to line 13 it uh, it can't set it there and so it's going to set it at the parent level uh, and then you, you you can get into the action and kind of step through if you need to or uh, there is a way I think if you have source map set up correctly you could probably get to the underlying JavaScript and figure out how to set a breakpoint if you wanted uh, and then we'll explore setting hard breakpoints which means you can put them exactly where you want uh, we'll get into that at the end of the video uh, so let's take a look at now that we've we've set the breakpoints and you can just click them to clear them by the way so you can see we just click here and it goes away let's get into uh, console.log I think that's a this is like probably the most basic right this is like the printf if you come from like an old school way of coding uh, you can just type console.log and now keep in mind this is universal JavaScript right here. This is being loaded on the server to do server-side rendering with Telescope, so we need to be careful what we put here. And so we can do, um, I don't know, what do we, we'll just do query params right here. And save that. And you'll see it's rebuilding, restarting, and like I said, this is also being loaded on the server, so we're getting the node console log going on right here. And then if we go back over here and check the node ins or the uh, Chrome inspector, we can see that we're getting the same output over here. And I think console log is super basic, but console is actually pretty powerful if you want to look at things. Uh, so, you know, I I think maybe the the faster way is to just put the breakpoint right here or right after right let's say we want to look at query params you probably put the breakpoint at line 18 and take a look because you can control it right here from Chrome the problem is you have to wait for the entire save cycle when you put it into your code on line 17 and everything has to restart basically which can take a little bit of time um, the other thing you can do with console is it's got console.table so you can do posts.find.fetch and you can see we get this nicely laid out table. Uh, the other thing you can do is like console.time. And that one's kind of fun. So if you're trying to do some kind of timing test, uh, you can add the console.time, set it up, and then you can call console.time end somewhere and give it the same handle name that you gave it, right? So we just give it like uh, my foo time test. And it's going to create one. And then we just call it time end. It's going to do the same thing. And you can see that it took me uh, 4.5 seconds to type everything in. <laughs> uh, so console is super powerful. But one thing to keep in mind is that, you know, this again, this is universal JavaScript. So if I type console.table over here, Node has no clue what that is. And it's going to throw start throwing errors down here in the bottom uh, that says has no method table. So do keep that in mind if you are doing universal JavaScript. All right. Um, I think one thing that I also wanted to show off here is using React can be pretty helpful as well. There's a React Chrome extension you can install and you can see it's connecting in and instrumenting all our containers and so we can dive down into the different containers so here's the list container that we rendered in and you can see we can come down here and do dollar sign R and that's basically putting us into the context of the list container you kinda get the idea and you can do the same thing up top here and you can see it tells you it gives you a little reminder like you can use dollar sign R in the console uh, but we can dive in to the collection this way we can look at the joins we can actually go deeper and you can keep going down and down and down until you get to where you need to be so I you know I think this is great uh, if you're looking for a way to kind of see how your apps being stitched together and what's being passed to the different components uh, the react Chrome extension is just it's amazing for that kind of stuff so give it a give it a look debugging 
in Node is similar but different. Uh, so we can type Meteor Debug here. And essentially what's going to happen is it's going to start Node Inspector and we're going to get a, uh, you can see here when it, when it spits it out, we're going to get a, a new URL that we can connect to. So we can just copy this in and paste it into our browser. It runs on localhost 8080. And basically it's instrumenting our Node app with some code and some communication can happen back and forth between Node Inspector and our actual running Node app. And uh, the first time you run it with Meteor, you can see it just automatically pauses here. Just hit continue, resume. And we can kind of browse through and find that same spot. Again, this is, ooh, it's loading things. Let me close this one. So we can open packages. Looks like it's still loading. So we're waiting for the uh, the Nova base components to come over. Now that we're mostly loaded, you can see we've got the Nova base components. And here's the router.jsx file. And we can just put a breakpoint here. And next time we load that code up somehow, we should get paused right at that point and so I think we will just get this in the in the browser we'll just get this waiting for localhost but in reality what's happened is we've paused on the node side so it may not be apparent right away and you can see here in the console we get paused at you know blah 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 it tells us exactly where we paused and now we can we can take a look at the query params whoops params you can see it's an object view new so it works exactly like the the uh, Chrome debugger we can unset that breakpoint we can hit resume come over here and the web page finish loading there we go so uh, it's a it's a nifty way to be able to to really kind of get into your node code using node inspector and there's other options too I think there's like an iron debug for node um, so there's, there's a lot of interesting things out there. Uh, the other thing you can do, and this is what I was talking about earlier, is you can set the uh, debugger keyword into your code. And so I'll show you what that looks like. You just type debugger here and save. And that's a hard breakpoint. And that essentially means that if you have a console open, it's going to stop at that debugger key point until someone hits continue. Like we're not just setting you know that that little tab in the console we need to reconnect here we're paused at that point so we just gotta wait till it pops up and then we can bypass it and so this is what I was talking about by the way you know this is the compiled JavaScript versus the you know the JSX and so you can see like we were trying to set a breakpoint right here on line like 223 and reality you know it, it doesn't necessarily line up correctly and so instead it'll come right up to the action and try to set the breakpoint there instead and you can see we've got the debugger keyword it stopped at line 214 and you can see it says the same thing in the console here and so we can just hit play to get past that and then we should hit the debugger here in the JavaScript console as well query params and you can see it works exactly the same the difference is you know it's like automatically stopping in the place that you want it to and so if you're having trouble uh, placing your breakpoint like this then you can use the debugger as well it's kind of like a last resort uh, and the thing that you have to be careful of with debugger is if you get into a loop you know if you're let's say we somehow got into the list container and we were setting a breakpoint on each list item being rendered we'd go through that five times which might get a little annoying because we have to 
you know, hit hit the resume button five times. The thing you can do in that case, let's say you you got into a list of a hundred or something, just close the console here and it'll just bypass it all. And then you can go take it back out and save. And then you don't have to worry about it again. So super handy. I, I there's been a number of times like I didn't know that at first and it was like, ah, oh, how do I get out of this? And you know, you keep hitting play, 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 and you know, you get tired of that. So just close the console and you should be all set. So thank you for watching. This is the, the very first Space, Do Space Dojo Code Kata. Uh, if you did enjoy it, like I said, hit the like button or uh, go over to Patreon and uh, support us over there. If you support at the $10 level, you can get into the Space Dojo Slack chat, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and if we hit that 1500, I'll start doing this every week on a regular basis. Uh, if we hit 50 likes, I will make at least one more video. So uh, really appreciate you guys watching. I, I love you guys as fans, and I, I think it's awesome I get to develop JavaScript apps every day. Uh, I've been doing this for, for over 10 years, and it's it still amazes me that I get to write things like this. So uh, thanks again, guys, and uh, hopefully we'll get the 50 likes. This video has been a Space Dojo production. You can click the Learn More button to find out more about us at spacedojo.com. Or you can click the Subscribe button to get notified about new videos we put out each week. Thanks for watching.